Okay. So we are recording now. Today is October 22nd, 2020. Okay. And today's topic is... Today's topic is conduits and raceways. Now, when we are dealing with, uh, with electrical systems, uh, you are going to, you are going to have to run the wires somehow. And those wires or cables and all the well, cables and wires are going to have to be installed in, uh, in, in a proper way. Uh, what does it mean proper way? Well, it's going to have to be installed in a way that complies with whatever the electrical or construction or building code is in whatever area that you are in. So if you're in Canada, you have to comply with the building code and electrical code that is in Canada. Uh, if you're somewhere else in Europe or Asia, then you're going to have to comply with whatever uh, rules and regulations apply there. Okay. But since we, are, since we are in Canada, we are going to talk about the uh, ways that are being done in Canada here. So this is going to be an easy lesson today. Uh, we're going to examine a few ways of installing cables and running conduits and raceways. There, it, well, it's, it would be impossible for me to show you all possibilities, but uh, what we can do is uh, I can show you the basic ways and from there um, we're going to build up your knowledge because if, uh, if you're working in, the, if you're in a business working <coughs> uh, in whatever branch uh, of, of uh, business that you are, things are changing all the time, but the basics remain the same. Wires have to be run in, wires have to run, uh, be installed in conduits and raceways. Just the type of conduits and raceways sometimes uh, are modified as new technology is being uh, invented and uh, old technology is being modified, all right? So, <clears throat> some of the basic uh, ways of running wires go as such. Conduits and raceways is the topic of today's lesson. Now, oh, here's a mouthful. All right, the uh, types of conduits and raceways. Uh, there are many different circumstances that require the use of conduits and raceways when running or uh, installing electrical wires. What would be some of those uh, uh, circumstances? Well, uh, if you are dealing with residential uh, wiring, uh, quite often you're going to uh, use uh, something that's called NMD90, and you should know what that stands for, NMD90. NMD90. Uh, NMD90. What does that stand for? NMD90 stands for non-metallic dry cable that is supposed to withstand 90 degrees Celsius. Okay. So most of that cable uh, doesn't require uh, conduits and raceways because it can be installed using staples such as this staple here. Those staples uh, consist of a plastic bracket and couple of nails that those nails, those nails are, bless you, whoever that was. Uh, some of those, uh, uh, so the wire is, is run right here. Just like that. And those nails are being nailed into the wooden frame, wooden frame. Okay. So in this case, uh, if it's a wooden frame, we do not need, if we are using NMD90, we do not need conduits and raceways. We can just uh, install the wire onto the frame. Okay. Now, uh, if the frame is not a wooden frame, not made out of wood, two by fours, studs, then we cannot run NMD90 just on those steel studs. We need to, uh, we need to either uh, install 
um, well, some sort of a background for them to run on, like a two by four mounted onto the steel stud. And then you can put those staples on and run the wire. However, most of the times those wires or cables will be run in pipes or conduits. Then uh, if it's a steel stud, if still it's a steel studding, a steel stud uh, frame, then you have to use conduits, which is uh, another way of saying pipes. Admit, okay. Uh, so that's that would be one uh, one reason to install that. And you know what? As we go along, we might we should probably come back to this slide at the end of the, the class, uh, and then you're going to have a better idea. So I gave you just one type of uh, uh, scenario. Uh, you're going to see as we go along some other scenarios uh, of why we should actually run the cables in the studs. Oh, sorry, in the studs in the Conduits or raceways, okay? All right. All right, so here's an example of uh, one particular type of metal conduit. It's called a rigid conduit. Rigid is, uh, the meaning of rigid is tough. So uh, uh, rigid as compared to what? Rigid as, comp as, uh, as uh, opposed to just a regular metallic uh, conduit. So this is a rigid metal conduit, and uh, we're going to have some um, metallic tubing, which is not as rigid as the rigid would be. Okay, here's a technical lingo for you. Okay. Uh, rigid metal conduit is in, is used uh, mostly when uh, when when wires are installed uh, outside, or when you need a stronger structure uh, for. Uh, for the wires to be inside of, is an English sentence. So that's what they look like. They are just metallic tubing and they come in different sizes of diameter. The diameter, uh, most common one is a half inch, then there's a three quarter inch, there's one inch, uh, and the sizes go up. Of course, uh, there are couplings. You can see couplings here because they come uh, in 10 foot lengths or 20 foot lengths. Most of the time you're going to see those wire, those uh, uh, conduits, uh, uh, most of the conduits are going to come in 10 feet lengths. Uh, if you have time, sometimes go to some of the local hardware store, such as Home Depot or Canadian Tire or Home Hardware or whatever else, uh, and uh, go to the electrical section and take a look at some of the conduits, different conduits. You're going to see metal conduits, you're going to see plastic conduits or PVC, or you might actually see some of the flexible conduits depending, or, uh, depending on the situation that, um, that requires inst uh, cable installation. Okay? All right, so that's what the rigid conduit looks like. It's an aluminum or aluminum type of a conduit. It's tough, as opposed to the electrical metallic tubing. And um, quite often this is referred to as EMT. Right? EMT, electrical metallic tubing. All right. I was going to say conduit, but electrical me metallic tubing or electric or electrical metallic tubing right now uh, it is uh, pretty much the same as the rigid but it's not as rigid as the rigid one is <laughs> got it got it all right uh, of course those are associated with uh, types of connectors that are being used i showed you uh, during the lab demonstration I, I showed you one type of connector that goes into the box uh, the, that uh, uh, that mounts the nmd cable into the box okay there's a two screw connector that we're using um, that we use for, to mount the e, um, NMD90 cable. This is the NMD90 cable. This is the lab that we are currently actually performing. Okay, so, uh, but if we uh, were to install a conduit into this box, then this connector is not going to work. We just take this out and we put a different connector. And uh, one of the last labs, uh, you're going to use those connectors. This would be an EMT connector. Uh, for electrical metallic 
tubing uh, and this of course this is the same part that goes inside the box and this part here of the connector is supposed to accommodate the tubing that is inserted into the connector so there's a straight pathway uh, straight or nice and easy pathway <coughs> Uh, for the wires to go into the box. This one here is also another different type of connector. It's called a coupler because sometimes you're going to uh, need uh, to run the conduit or raceway for a distance that's longer than 10 feet. So you need to sometimes join those connect those uh, those EMTs or metallic tubing or any kind of raceway or conduits. And when it comes to EMT, these type of couplers are being used. Uh, so you insert, you insert this tubing from one end and you insert this tubing from the other end, so you've got a continuous length. And these are called set screws. Okay. Those sets, the purpose of the set screws is to basically hold that conduit in place. Uh, I'm going to have to say something to you because um, quite often what you're going to see uh, the electrical wires are not the only things that uh, you're going to be running in the inside the EMT. There could be sometimes uh, communications wires, data cables, or sometimes security cameras, uh, security camera surveillance cameras. You'll be surprised how many of the telecommunications jobs you'll be asked to do, uh, not just the electrical jobs. Uh, it used to be that uh, the electricians would only deal with, electri deal with the electrical stuff and then the communication uh, people would only deal with the communication parts. But now uh, a lot of electricians are being asked to install telecommunications equipment. So let's say there is a security camera and uh, quite often it's going to be mounted from a ceiling. So this is the ceiling. Whatever it might be. Okay, concrete, wood, or whatever it is. So sometimes you're going to be asked to mount the EMT from the ceiling. And quite often you're going to need to extend because the, uh, the height of the camera uh, is going to require you to suspend uh, more than one 10 foot length. So of course you're going to use the coupling here, just like this one, this type of a coupler. Okay. And you're going to, with the set screws, and you're going to maybe cut another two feet or something, and then you're going to install whatever the security camera is. And inside those, you're going to run the wires. Usually for the security cameras right now, it's just going to run one CAT5E cable and that's it. Uh, now, uh, sometimes you're going to be asked to install it like this. Now, there are set screws and um, if you're mounting the EMT vertically, these set screws, this coupler is not designed to withstand this type of uh, load. So, um, so those set screws are not designed to hold this. They're just installed, they're designed when you're extending the electrical metallic tubing on the wall and you're mounting those tubes using brackets onto the wall and that just, uh, the coupler is just used to, to, to make that thing nice, neat and straight. It is not designed to withstand the load of any kind. It's not just, it's just not designed to do that. So, but however, you're going to be asked to install things that way. So basically what you do in this case, uh, quite often, well, quite often, the electrical metallic tubing goes inside the, con the coupler some distance, that's what's inside. Uh, you can just, uh, what I did whenever I did that, uh, I would just drill a hole right through here. Okay? And I would drill a hole another hole right through here on the, well, maybe on the other side where the set screws are, okay? Or maybe from the side. And then you would just use a, you would just use a safety wire. Aircraft cable, it's called aircraft cable or um, piano wire sometimes. It's a steel, it's a steel type of wire. Use it 
for safety and just tie it nicely you might also drill a drill a hole here and just run a screw that goes right through both uh, both uh, uh, pieces this is how you get away with that uh, it has to be done nice and safe so safety wires are always uh, important and then you also run a safety wire between this uh, metallic tubing and the camera bracket and you will also run a safety wire at the mounting uh, spot right here so if something lets go things do not fall down on somebody's head uh, of course all the time wherever you whatever you do uh, wherever your installation is it will have to comply and uh, with the building codes and safety rules and regulations and it will have to be inspected by a safety inspector uh, whoever receives that job okay nice and clear all right go back to uh, Optical fiber community is EMT conduit. Yes, uh, you can run optical fiber. Yes, you can run optical fiber quite often. It's being done inside the EMT. EMT protects the cables. Oh, somebody's trying to get in. Admit. All right. Is a conduit considered a raceway? Yes. Conduit is a type of a raceway. Just like chicken is type of the food or cheesecake is type of food. <clears throat> All right, keep going. Non-metallic tubing. Non-metallic tubing comes in various uh, shapes and forms. This is, uh, this is just one type of, uh, of the non-metallic PVC type of conduit. This one is flexible conduit. Sometimes you need to, uh, uh, I, need, I want food in, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, sometimes you need, it is more economical or practical to install plastic tubing, uh, then uh, yes, you can choose plastic tubing. And of course, with every type of tubing there are specific connectors and couplers associated with that high flexible conduit so this is flexible and this is highly flexible and of course once you uh, select that uh, you're going to in the store or distribution place uh, you're going to have to find uh, uh, connectors and couplers that are associated with that particular one and basically when they sell this they will sell you the appropriate paraphernalia that goes with it okay uh, now there's a pvc conduit just like the um, just like the metallic conduit uh, it's a piece of pipe that you run your cables or wires in Sometimes you run the whole cable, NMD90 cable inside the tubing, and sometimes you run single conductors inside the uh, tubing, which would be either metallic or plastic. Now with plastic, you, uh, we're going to, with metallic tubing, we are going to, um, before you leave my class, during the lab, one of the lab sessions, I think it's the second lab, last lab session you're going to practice bending the emt and we're going to create something that's called a box offset but uh, the pipe bending is going to be tomorrow's lecture uh, so we're going to perform a simple uh, uh, box offset uh, conduit bending using the, the pipe benders now I'll, uh, also when uh, when you when you move to the next class uh, the next during the next term you're going to be shown uh, somewhat more complicated ways of bending the uh, conduits and uh, you're going to be doing you you'll perform bending the metallic tubing and you'll perform bending the PVC tubing using similar tools but there are slightly different techniques of doing that and there are different types of bands that you're going to perform however uh, in uh, when it comes to PVC tubing, uh, sometimes you get uh, gadgets that go with it that are basically prefabricated. So you can have a stubby elbow 
uh, that is uh, supposed to run uh, so you don't have to bend the pipe you can just install straight one into here and straight tubing into here and you have a right angle and you just use the plastic glue the synthetic glue to uh, to hold that in place and there are different brackets for mounting uh, and different couplers and uh, T splitters and so on and there are also boxes associated with that uh, only way I see possible uh, even then sounds interesting I don't don't you use heat yes you use heat you use heat uh, heat guns uh, to bend the pipes you use the same pipe pipe sorry pipe pipe benders uh, that we would use for the metallic tubing but you're performing that uh, um, activity in slightly different way uh, you don't use heat gun to bend the metallic tubing, but you will use heat gun um, and some maybe wet clotting to, to, to for for more rapid cooling thing cooling down process uh, in order to bend the uh, plastic tubing. Okay. Move along. I wonder what's with the next slide. Okay, flexible metal conduit. In some cases, you, you're going to need a flexible conduit, not only that it flexes, in a way that not only that it flexes, but it has to be tough to withstand uh, some tough physical conditions. And some of those uh, metallic uh, tubing, or flexible metal conduit, they come empty, or sometimes they come in uh, with uh, pre-wired with a wire in so that's a, it's called armored cable uh, now strut type of chase uh, channel raceway uh, channel raceway uh, quite often you're going to see things like this okay now when um, okay someone's coming in I'm just joining All right um, Depending on the situation, you might uh, just uh, have to install some metal tubing, and that's fine. Uh, it's it's in, a in wall uh, installations or uh, things like garages uh, and uh, things I'm, that aesthetics are not the priority. Functionality is so that would be the like warehouses or uh, car shops or, or, or garages and whatnot. Uh, then you can just run surface. Uh, um, um, the, the you can run the tubing or raceways uh, it's called surface running so basically mounting on the wall and they're not covered in houses uh, residential or some uh, office type of environment if there if any of the metallic tubing is installed it's going to be installed in wall either in the cement blocks or behind the drywall Now, in some cases, you're going to encounter this type of raceway. Now, uh, it's a multifunction raceway. What can we see here? Um, some of the meta of the, the, the channel raceway, because it has channels. There's one channel here, and there's another channel here, okay? So now, this one here, you can see that there are single conductors run, and what can we see? We see a black, which would be a hot conductor. We see a white conductor. Uh, which is uh, neutral and we also see a green jacketed conductor which is the grounding or bonding conductor so this would be the service or power side of this channel raceway and uh, quite often they are separated by a separator and quite often there is a metal insert inside that separator to separate uh, the magnetic fields that this uh, the, uh, the electrical wires might generate, okay. some come with the uh, uh, metallic separator. Sometimes, sometimes they just come with the plastic version. Okay, so you just have to look at the specs and what is required. When it comes to installing data cables, uh, this uh, this is an example of probably that looks like uh, to me like a Cat Six. Uh, I can't tell because there is no any labels on this cable here, but that looks like a data cable. And over here, that looks like an optical fiber cable. Okay. Looks like a multi-mode. Uh, next term, when you have with me uh, the net, uh, network cabling, we are going to take a closer look at the details that are associated with this type of cables. But now we are dealing with the electrical stuff. 
so uh, usually those are um, <clears throat> installed in office environments. And I'm just going to stop this PowerPoint presentation for a sec. And I'm going to just give you some examples that I have just pulled from the internet. This is basically what office furniture looks like. Let me get the other picture first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I bring it on this on the bigger? Yeah. Okay. That's as far as I can get uh, with the sizing of this picture. Now, this is a typical office, uh, so-called modular furniture. And as you can tell, there are cubicles and there's no wiring that you can see, but the wires are run inside and there are uh, special raceways that are designed to go with the, uh, I would hate to be in the cubicle closet <laughs> closest to us. <laughs> okay, whatever that means, good. Now, uh, uh, just by looking at this, what I can, uh, based on my experience in the, uh, my construction experience, doing installing all kinds of systems, one thing I can see is that uh, this, par this part of this uh, furniture is installed close, either close to the wall, but now I can tell that no, it's not. So the wires have to be brought in somehow. So this looks to me like somebody is advertising the, uh, uh, the cubicle furniture and not showing all the details that are associated with that. But I'll tell you how usually those things are done. Usually this back wall or this wall or one of the walls of the modular furniture would be adjacent to one of the walls. So the wiring can be run inside the wall and on the bottom of this, you see here, there's a bit of a raceway right on the bottom. That's where the wires run. Now that is openable. You can open this. There's that, that front um, basal or faceplate, the long faceplate that basically comes off. You can just detach that and you can see the wires inside. And you can run the wires from the wall all the way all the through, through the cubicles. So you would have different sets of wires depending on the specifications of the job. But usually, well, always, you're going to have power run to every cubicle depending on how many circuits they are. And you're going to have data cabling or communications cabling run in that office uh, furniture. If it is impossible to run, to, to place the cubicles or the whole set or island uh, right to the wall, there are different ways of installing cables. Sometimes there is something that's called a jiffy pole or a pack pole, which is, uh, which is basically a channeling that it's a vertical type of a channeling that goes right from one of those corners here right into the ceiling and that's where the wires come down and the wires can be brought in anywhere from here to here or maybe from ceiling to one of those and the wires will be distributed or sometimes they are very rarely but uh, uh, they also can be run through the floor through the floor it, uh, it is associated with a little bit more planning and you're limited to where your furniture is going to be so people usually try to stay away from those type of solutions the running things close to the wall or coming down from the ceiling with the wiring is more sensible solution because if you want to rearrange the furniture and move things around you just remove that pack pole and you put it somewhere else okay whereas if you have the channeling run in the floor then you need to, uh, you're stuck with where your furniture is supposed to be. Uh, now, uh, those, um, that modular furniture is arranged basically just like Lego blocks, okay? And um, uh, uh, the wire, sometimes they are pre-wired with electrical wires and you are going to have connectors between the modules that they're just snap into each other and the power is connected. Everything comes off. Those panels right here, they come off. Those panels on the other side of here, they come off. Uh, so you'll be running those, uh, you'll be running, 
you would run the cables inside this raceway that is on the bottom. Sometimes the raceway is uh, on top of the desktop. It depends on what type of furniture, but I just want you to know that quite often, uh, if you go in business, you are going to be dealing with that type of, uh, of uh, furniture and that, these type of uh, installations. So raceways are going to be uh, installed. Let me take a look at the uh, other picture here. All right. So this is just another way of installing thing, uh, modular furniture. Uh, whoa. Come back, forgot to pause it. There you go, pause. So this is another office furniture. Quite often uh, um, in, they're used in um, office buildings. Uh, a lot of jobs doing installations in Toronto area, GTA, Greater Toronto area. Uh, if you are able to move there and uh, get yourself in, uh, working for a company that does electrical installations or data, uh, so-called data installations or, or communications, then uh, you're going to be as busy as you want to. You won't be able to shake the jobs that are coming at you because uh, new and new office spaces are being set up, torn down, people are adding, people are moving from one floor to another. You, things are always busy, you know, especially in the Toronto downtown area. The only bad thing about that is driving there. Okay? Just, just driving through Toronto downtown is, uh, uh, is quite a chore sometimes. Okay? Um, faster to walk. Yes, it is faster to walk. Uh, so sometimes when I when I was in business doing installations, I was uh, I would just have to go and find the closest parking paid parking uh, lot, and uh, sometimes I would just drive my uh, my company vehicle right into the loading dock of whatever the high rise would be or the business high rise, unload, then find myself a parking somewhere maybe a sometimes 15 20 minute walk, park the van and walk you know so sometimes a lot of time that you spend doing the toronto downtown jobs is basically getting and getting to and from those places right so make sure you include that you include that in the cost of the jobs if you're pricing those later on yeah. okay uh, let's go back to our powerpoint okay so this would be a strat type of channel raceway. Uh, surface mounted raceway, uh, you see that, you can see that in our school as well. If you go to any of the labs, you will see this. Uh, so this type of raceway is also divided into power and communications, some called extra low voltage cables or low voltage cables, which is 120 volts that we're dealing with here in Canada. Uh, so this, uh, as you can see in this one here, the top part of that would be dealing with electrical wires. And I can see, you probably don't see that here because you, you see a slightly blurry version of this. However, when you download this uh, presentation in PDF form, you will be, see, you'll be able to see that the, there's a duplex receptacle here that is mounted in the top part of the raceway. And this would be designated, this bottom part would be designated uh, for the telecommunication wiring. So this will be a surface mounted raceway. Cable trays. Um, cable trays are quite popular when running uh, different type of cabling. It could be service, power. This looks like it's a power uh, kind of a setup. Uh, raceways or cable trays, they look like uh, some version of a ladder that is put in horizontally, installed horizontally in the ceiling space usually. And what you can see here, there, there would be mounting rods that would be mounted through the ceiling tiles, because these are these, I can see that these are ceiling tiles here. And they go through that and there could be uh, one, two, three, four, maybe eight feet of a space between those ceiling tiles and the true ceiling. So uh, the, the mounting, mounting of that, is, is, it could be quite complicated. But uh, if you're 
doing a, a lot of that, uh, you're going to become uh, quite handy doing this type of things, right? So uh, this would be something that's called a cable tray. Though cable trays are used for uh, running. Uh, yes, I have done uh, some of those, and let me tell you, uh, in, in, in one case, uh, there was a, you build your muscle when you do that. <laughs> I'll tell you that. And you gotta be careful not to overwork yourself. Uh, because sometimes you work too much doing this type of job, uh, you can you can hurt your muscles. Okay? Uh, that take, that's a huge part of preparing for the installation. So running cables or installing cables is not just uh, taking a cable from one point and run it where whichever way you want in the ceiling or in the wall to another point. You can do that with one or two cables, okay? But if you're dealing with hundreds of cables, <laughs> I mean hundreds of cables, then you have to have some sort of structured way of doing that. Okay? So cable trays are, uh, sometimes they're installed underneath the ceiling tiles, and sometimes they're installed above the ceiling tiles, so they're covered and not seen. And sometimes they're just exposed without the ceiling tiles, depending on the environment. That, uh, that you're in. Wireways, uh, also a popular way of installing wires, although they used to be more popular maybe 20 years ago, uh, not as much today. However, you can still see those. Yeah? You can have some requests uh, on installing um, those wireways. The, the only problem with that is that if you have a too big of a wireway it occupies space and um, you don't have so much separation between communications wiring now the communications wiring is becomes more as the technology advances the communications wires are designed to handle more speed but uh, if uh, you're talking about running cable uh, designing cables or having cables that is capable of more speed or more bandwidth, then those cables are usually more sensitive to interference. So if you're running a lot of cables just running into that tray, uh, you're running uh, into the possibility of something interfering with those cables. However, in some cases you're going to be required to install this type of a raceway because you, don't, you want to separate your wires from interference from other equipment, equipment that is installed around that. Usually the ceiling space, uh, quite often the ceiling space is going to be quite busy. You see the ceiling tiles nicely and you see the fluorescent lights or whatever, it, uh, it, it, it looks nice when you walk through the hallway. You pop the ceiling tile and there's a whole bunch of things uh, that are installed there uh, and things do get busy. Uh, some devices produce interference uh, and some devices uh, want to have no interference from your wiring. So uh, that's why you would install something like a metallic type of a wireway um, uh, in order to run your wires. Uh, metallic uh, raceway to the wireway uh, can get quite messy. So you just really have to... Um, uh, be care, uh, be careful. Really have to plan your ways uh, in as, as far as filling in those those cables. This is a wireway that uh, accommodates electrical wiring. Uh, they're also used. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to read your chat lines. I don't know what you mean. So if you can rephrase your questions, I can answer them. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so uh, those can accommodate electrical wires and they can also accommodate um, data or communication wires. Bus bar. Bus bar, bus bars are modules uh, 
modules that you can interconnect with each other. So you're installing a bus bar. So there will be modules that contain electrical wires and they snap onto each other. And uh, sometimes that is being that type of wire electrical uh, wiring is also being used. Much cleaner, but less flexible or less uh, versatile. But then again, you just sometimes you just need what you need, install it, and uh, and go home. Um, so this is type of uh, you know you don't run the wires in the bus bar. The bus bar contains wires already. You just join them together, just like the Lego blocks. And you have to just uh, really know what you're ordering uh, when uh, when you're installing these type of things. These are expensive uh, type of installations. Here. Now this is the end of today's presentation. Uh, where am I here? Here I am. Yeah. As I said, this was going to be a nice and easy lesson. You are going to have some of those questions regarding this type of uh, um, wiring installations uh, on quizzes and tests. Um, as I said, I can't, it is impossible for me to show you every possible solution that exists, but these are the most common and the most basic uh, solutions when it comes to installing wiring, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Nothing in the chat lines. Just, uh, Mark, what is your favorite raceway? Uh, green. <laughs> um, what? Uh, what is it that you mean, Kevin? Oh, ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. <sighs> All right, I thought you meant something else. <laughs> <laughs> favorite raceway. Uh, my favorite raceway would be probably the cable tray. Because cable tray you can buy, and cable tray you can make of your own using a strut type of a raceway, uh, which I should probably show you one of those lessons of how to make your own cable tray. If you're stuck on a job site and you don't have one, right? or your boss is too cheap to order you a proper one and they tell you to make one. Happens sometimes too. Uh, so uh, yeah, you know, uh, it, that depends. Uh, sometimes uh, PVC is, uh, is a good way of installing wires because it's just easy to install. Uh, now when it comes to PVC, uh, just have to make sure that you know that the PVC piping expands and contracts as the temperatures go, hot and cold, winter, summer. So you will going to have to install those uh, stress relief, strain relief uh, uh, pieces between the sections of the PVC conduit. It looks like a flexible conduit. So sometimes you're going to see uh, a straight piece of PVC conduit and then it's going to be interrupted and there's going to be a bit of a flexible pipe and then another, it, it, it continues. It's not because somebody ran out of the PVC piping, it's basically to accommodate the expansion and contraction of the, uh, of the line uh, as, the, as the temperatures go uh, uh, um, up and down, all right? Okay, if there's no any questions, I think, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going like, hmm? All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so don't forget the quiz starts. Uh, was it October? To, uh, look at the announcements. Let me see here. The announcements. Where am I? Here. Quiz one starts October 23rd. Uh, which is uh, tomorrow, 12 a.m. I'm not sure how many questions uh, uh, attempts you are going to have. Uh, you can read that, and if you don't understand something, uh, send me an email. But it's going to be the same way. It's considered quiz one, 
you have two attempts and the reason why I give you two attempts is because sometimes uh, you got internet interruption or something like that so when you do have that you know that happens to you don't log in right away because uh, maybe there's something happening and if you log in right away you lose the two opportunities to write the quiz and after the deadline is done please do not ask me for extensions because you have a whole week to do it and uh, please do not send me um, 600 word essay of why you couldn't take uh, uh, you know uh, 15 20 30 minutes uh, of a whole week because uh, uh, you know your dog got sick and then uh, uh, your pigeon broke a leg and uh, your squirrel got uh, you know a stomach ache and you have to find three types of beds and so on um, then uh, you know uh, I'm going I'm not going to read that <laughs> all right um, so <clears throat> Quiz one is wet. Sorry, quiz one is on wet. So just look at the announcements. Okay, see so here's our port the portal of our class. Like the class. Oh, hold on. Here, here's our class portal. All right, here's the announcements. This is the announcement about today's lecture. I can actually erase that announcement because the, this lecture has just happened so that announcement is erased so the first thing is going to see is the quiz one begins friday which is tomorrow october 23rd uh it's an online open book quiz available on 23rd 12 a.m to october 31st uh, 12 a.m which means if uh if uh, uh this the uh this the clock strikes uh the, uh, the 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 midnight hour on October thirtieth. Uh, that means that's the end of the quiz. All right. Here are the reference materials, all the lectures notes, and it's, since it's an open book, you can do search. So I had to make it slightly more difficult with a little bit more details to make you look into some of those details, uh, because this is also how you are learning. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and all the videos I posted online, so you can still, uh, uh, if you have time to watch all those videos, you're welcome to. And uh, so that's why I encourage you to come to class, the online class, so uh, you can participate in this lecture just like you did right now. So I thank you for that. And if you need to uh, go back and look into some details, you can. Right? Okay, so I will see you tomorrow at, tomorrow at, Uh, da, 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 da. Tomorrow at 11. Tomorrow at 11 is going to be second part of the lecture. And we're going to talk about uh, some other topic. I'll see you later. Thank you.